Blackburn Rovers have got five games to save their season and it starts this Saturday at the Memorial Stadium where it's the Battle of the BRFC's Part 2 Bristol Rovers up against Blackburn Rovers. We'll talk that match and more on today's show. That's right folks, back once again with another match preview, this time counting down to our latest mega game of the season, season defining match. This is up against Bristol Rovers. We'll talk more on that match in just one second. But if you're new, hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers, baby. It just gets it just gets crazier and crazier. Yes, this match could be season defining. Well, obviously, if everything else goes our way, and a lot can happen even before Saturday. Obviously, there's a massive, massive game on Thursday at Valley Parade, where former Rover Simon Grayson takes his boys, his Bradford boys, uh, takes on third place Shrewsbury and if, if the results go our way which is in favour of Bradford I'll be I'll be cheering on the old Bradford boys um, it could be a little bit more rosy and a little bit more uh, a little bit more cheeky come Saturday but if which is more likely to be because Shrewsbury are just so persistent and just will not go away it could be a very very tense affair on Saturday where it could the gap could only be two points but anyway let's talk more about the match between Blackburn Rovers and their hosts Bristol Rovers, the Battle of the BRFCs. Yes, it takes place Saturday, 14th of April. Uh, and last season, Bristol Rovers finished 10th. And they are, oh, guess what? 10th place right now. And the current top scorer is Ellis Harrison with 12 goals. And the man pulling the strings is Daryl Clark. Now, over the years, Bristol Rovers and Blackburn Rovers have played 36 times. And Bristol Rovers, according to my stat statistics, have won 15 of them. They, uh, Blackburn Rovers have won 14. Uh, and the two sides have drawn seven between them. So it's a very, it's a very tight very tight uh, st uh, numbers there. As for the last five results at Memorial Stadium, they look like this. Uh, Rovers, not won uh, since 1990 when they won 2 1, back in the old Division 2. That's the second from the bottom there. Uh, but uh, Blackburn have been on the, on the end of some spankings here. And the last time that these two sides did meet, Bristol Rovers came out 3 0 winners. Now let's take a look at the starting 11s now, first and foremost, for the hosts who wear a kind of similar. I would say it's a very similar home jersey to Blackburn Rovers. Instead of blue and white halves, they have blue and white segments. Anyway, Slocum in goal are Jay Clark, Lockyer, Craig, Brown, O. Clark, Circum, Mensa, Bennett, Moore, and Harrison. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that Bennett is the other, the, the sibling of our Elliot Bennett. Let's take a look at the statistics for Bristol Rovers. Current top goal scorer is Harrison with 14 goals. Circum's in there with 11. Gaffney's in there with 7. And Lyons is in there with 4. As for the discipline, Clark's got 10. Uh, yellows, Lions has got seven, Harrison's got six, Partington's got five. As for the Reds, four guys on Reds, or at least four guys on Reds. Lions, Slocum, Lockyer, and Sweeney. Now, the last five games for Bristol Rovers look like this. Now, have a quick glance over that. They've only won one in, in five, so that's, that's not too good a form. So, hopefully, Rovers can take advantage of this. But it's a long, old slog for the fans. But it's a Saturday. So at least it's not a midweek game, so I'm hoping the boys... Uh, and the girls that do make the trip out to uh, the Memorial Stadium will have a good day. But anyway, uh, last five uh, matches or results for Bristol Rose look like this. They took on Charlton at their place and they drew 1-1 before losing to Fleetwood on the road. Their last home win was against Bottom Club Berry, 2-1 winners. And that was back on Friday the 30th of March. All the way back on Saturday the 24th of March, they drew 1-1 uh, away from home against Peterborough United. And all the way back, 17th of March, uh, Plymouth. With 3-2 winners at home farm. As for Rovers, this is how I feel they will start the match against Bristol Rovers in their I really do like this jersey. But anyway, they're la the this is the lineup I think will start. Right and go. I think Travis will get the nod. Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett into midfield. Smallwood, Dak, Armstrong, Graham, and Payne. Now I did, as I was coming up with this uh with this uh, uh lineup, I did actually drop Dak for like a second. I thought I, I just can't do it. I just can't drop Dak. Yeah, and I'm not dra dropping Dak because of, of uh, I just I'm just dropping Dak because of fitness levels. I don't know if he's if he's all there at the moment, um, and, that, and that's my major concern. Do we do we play a semi-fit Dak, or do we try and hold him back for the last four games of the season when we do have some tricky ones up against Charlton, up against Peterborough, uh, and even the, obviously the, the end of the season game against Oxford. Um, but he's just undroppable. I, I, I think a rusty a rusty Dak is still a game changer. But I, I'm going to leave that with Mowbray's hands. If 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 he does just decide to drop Dak, obviously you would stick my best mate Payne in there, and then also probably push uh, Antonson into that uh, 
that slot left by Payne. Anyway, moving forward, let's take a look at the statistics for Rovers. Dak currently top spots with 17 goals. Graham's there with 16 in second place. Mulgrew could have had a goal this uh, midweek against Gillingham, but uh, his uh, free kick efforts were null and void. Uh, Armstrong's in fourth place with nine goals. As for the discipline, Smallwood's now on 10. Yellis, Bennett's with eight. Evans with seven. And Williams with seven into the Reds. Bennett still top spots with two Reds. Samuel and Lewis Travis both have a Red. As for the statistics for Rovers, uh, the last five games look like this. Last time out, obviously, we drew 0-0 against Gillingham before beating Southend at home at Ewood Park 1-0. Before that, back on the 2nd of April, uh, we took on Milton Keynes and we won 2-1. We also took on Bradford City in front of the Sky Cameras and we won 2-0. And that's all the way back 29th of March. And all the way back 10th of March, we took on Blackpool, GB's Blackpool at Ewood Park and we won 3-0. Now, let's take a look at the form books and the grand scheme of things for the whole division as you can see, Rovers currently a second in the away charts. In the last six games, we've, we've picked up 13 points out of a possible, what is it, 18? As for the home form, Bristol Rovers have picked up nine points from a possible 18 in the last six games. Obviously, the result against Gillingham is, is not ideal. But they've got, what is it now, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to prepare. I'm hoping that uh, if Dak is just, you know, if he can get put through his paces a little bit and we can make a good call on that, then maybe, just maybe, we can find that that winning winning tonic to pull out a an away win. Because an away win against Bristol Rovers, and hopefully with results, maybe at, at Valley Parade, um, and also at Wigan, because we'll talk more about who we're going to be playing in just one second. But it could reopen the title talk again, because right now, I, I think I'm, I'm with the majority of Rovers fans thinking... That is probably one step too far. But the promotion is still on the cards. And again, a lot can change in the next two or three days. So it's pretty, pretty manic. So let's take a look at the matches that are going to happen over the next few days. First and foremost, probably the biggest game of the season. It doesn't even involve Blackburn Rovers. It's Bradford City up against Shrewsbury. Under the sky cameras. Uh, so hopefully ex-Rover Simon Grayson could do us a favour and actually pull off a cheeky victory uh, up against the third place Shrewsbury because a win for Shrewsbury and the gap uh, goes down to two points and then we are really looking over our shoulders because we've got the probably the harder game uh, in the next round of fixtures and that is obviously Bristol Rovers for us and they will be taking on Charlton uh, at home so I, I feel we've got the harder game out of those two sides meanwhile we're going to have a pretty tasty encounter up against fourth place Rotherham and that's not a given I, uh, to be honest with you I think that's going to probably cancel each other out and be a draw so if if, as a big if, Rovers get one over their fellow Rovers, Bristol, and get a win, and Wigan do draw, then the title talk can be back on. But right now, I'm with the most of the other fans and thinking that the title the title is just one step too far. But to be honest with you, if you offered me promotion at the start of the season, I would have bitten your bloody hand off. Let's take on the run-ins now. First and foremost, Blackburn Rovers. Obviously, our next match is this weekend against Bristol Rovers. Before or after that, we take on Peterborough United at Ewood Park, which is which will be our penultimate game at Ewood Park. It's in front of the Sky Cameras on a Thursday night. After that, we take on Doncaster, away game, and it's a midweek game uh, at their place. Uh, before wrapping up our away day travels against Charlton at the Valley on Saturday 28th of April before wrapping up the season hopefully in a positive way against Oxford at home uh, to uh, hopefully uh, uh, to much much cheer by the Rovers faithful anyway let's take a look at current leaders where Wigan Athletic obviously they take on Rotherham which is pretty much a bit, a bit, of, a, bit of a banana skin uh, then we go further down they take on Oxford at home then we take on Inform Fleetwood who have seemingly they, they, they were more of relegation candidates, but now they are now looking cheekily over their heads, and maybe they, could they could they make a late push for the playoffs? I doubt it, but uh, but they're in form. Then they also head head on the road to Bristol Rovers again, tricky match before wrapping or their penultimate or their last home game, which will be up against relegation fodder AFC Wimbledon. So that could be a tricky one before wrapping up the season away to Doncaster Rovers. How about third place Shrewsbury? Here are their, their remaining fixtures. In fact, they've got one, two, three, four of their last six games are at home. So that could go into their favour. Anyway, they take on Bradford City in probably the game of the season. I mentioned that already. After that, they take on Charlton at home, Berry at home, Peterborough at home. Uh, their last away game of the season is against Blackpool. And they wrap up the season up against Strugglers MK Dons. Now, you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. What did the gaff have to say shortly after the match? against Chillingham and extended talking heads. Yeah, it was a difficult night for us. It was one that um, 
we didn't quite get the fluency that we normally show. I think great credit to them. They, uh, you know, defensively they had three big, huge, big centre halves there. It was difficult to, to to find the space in the box. They just kept heading the thing out and booting it clear. And you know, I, I never felt as if we were threatened the other end too much. And yet, trying to break them down, Bradley had a quiet night coming back home. You know, to the place where we brought him from, and he played a lot of his football. Sometimes it's difficult for players to go back and the focus, the concentration, it, it looked as if he just wasn't playing freely um, and I think that's, uh, when Bradley's not playing freely it takes something away from our team. We total respect he can make the difference with his creativity, that little bit of magic, stick it through someone's leg, slide somebody in and, and we scored a goal and yet that um, um, didn't happen tonight. We, we toiled away with it for an hour or so and then we changed him because we got another game on Saturday. Um, Danny again, is, we, we've talked before, it, Three games a week is really difficult for Danny, especially he's had a carrying a sore back recently. And um, so we made the changes. It didn't quite work for us. Um, I think we have to take the positives, put the point in the bag. It's a tough away game, and God, Gillingham. I was going to call it the middle of nowhere. It's it's not that's to be respectful to them. It's you know it's a nice football stadium and they're good people, I'm sure. But um, you know it's been a long trip for us. We had a few issues getting here, but. Um, no, no excuses. We weren't fluent enough really tonight, and uh, we we didn't finish the game off. It might have been nice if to have put a one nil in the bag, wouldn't it? Like the Saturday, really talk about lack of fluency, but not worry about it because we've got the points. But it was going to be difficult to win the last I don't know how many games, eight nine games. You know, we we're going to drop some points somewhere along the line, as the other teams are, I'm sure. So um, let's put a, a tough away game behind us, put a point in the bag, and move on to the next one. Yeah, let's wait and see. It's. Um, who knows what what the what, the, what Shrewsbury Town and, and uh, Wigan Athletic are going to do? Which we have to look after ourselves. We have to try and win as many football matches in the last five as we can. It could be an important point. I think our goal difference with Shrewsbury, of course, is is, is a factor that could come into it if points are level. It's um, so every point is crucial. Of course, we have to concentrate and try and win games. Um, and we, with the five left, we won't be setting up to go for a point in any of those games. We'll be trying to win them all. And somewhere along the line, we might lose one because we're going to be trying to be positive. But um, tonight, they put up a, you know, a, a solid show behind the ball. As I said, they had three big centre halves, kept in the ball, kept clearing their box. Um, I didn't feel too much threat from them, but we didn't have ultimately the uh, enough goal efforts. I think. The keeper made two or three good saves, a free kick from Charlie, a shot from Corey, but not much else really. And um, yeah, it just wasn't our night tonight. Yeah, I think you have to do that. It's, you know, the bottom line, as I said, we now hit 86 points. Bolton, Bolton got promoted with 86 points last year, finished second in the league, and um, we've got five more games to get you know another 15 points. So um, that's what we're going to aim to do. We have to stay really positive, believe that. We've got a good team, we know we've got a good team and, uh, and I'm sure we'll be ready come Saturday at kick-off time. Now you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match and you've heard a bit what the gaffers had to say about the match. What's been going on on social media? What the fans been saying? Well, to be honest with you, not much on social media, but a lot of talk going on on the BRFCS forum. And they are talking about more about the result against Gillingham than preparing for Bristol Rovers. But anyway, let's take a look. DE said this, it's performances rather than results that are making most of us tetchy. We are playing decently, but have just drawn a couple of games. Unlucky that you say, okay, nothing to worry about, but we really have been very, very poor over the last few games. And we do look, do not look like a team challenging for the automatic promotion places. We look very much on Gillingham's level tonight. We scraped past South End and the MK Dons. Results continue to be acceptable, but I don't buy these posts that talk about Mowbray playing good football. I've seen little evidence of that this season. Some nice passages to play, yes. But we're a team that grinds out results and relies on our better players to break deadlocks as opposed to our style of play. Not even sure what our style of play really is. Doesn't matter as long as we go up, in all fairness. But it's weird to have this sense of constant frustration in a season. We've only lost five times and are in the automatic promotion place. As for Garner Spag said this. I can't understand the criticism of posters who are concerned that we haven't played well for a number of games and that we're making some very ordinary teams look like promotion contenders. It's hard to watch and disappointing. This is not a comment on our season or Mowbray. Recently, it's, it seemed easy for opposing managers to tactically nullify our major threats. Yes, we've had a good old season, but the match threads on this message board are for us to comment on this particular match. It's disappointing to be repeatedly frustrated, and we were tonight by teams with a tenth of our resources and shows us that we will have to seriously invest to guarantee mid-table championship stability. 
this tempers my enjoyment of a promising season. I apologise if this is unreasonably neg negative in some members' eyes. Jim MK2 said this. Some thoughts from a wet Priestfield road. Why is it acceptable for away supporters to have uh, to watch a match without a roof over their heads in this British climate? Question mark. This that was very long. Uh, an audience trip to watch a match of complete nothingness. The first 45 minutes was among the worst I've seen. The second half was better, but overall we were poor. It was a point gained rather than two lost. Gillingham were very good. They prevented us creating a single clear-cut chance that could easily have scored two themselves. Their forward lack of control when through on goal in the second half was laughable. They pressed us high up the pitch for 90 minutes and forced us into mistakes all the time. In short, we never got going. On the players... Uh, on to the players. It was clear Dax should never have started. Why risk him? And Conway had a stinker before being dragged off. Only Raya came out of the game with credit. Funnily enough, I thought Samuel showed good touches when he came on. But uh, what is his best position? He hides out on the right and clearly doesn't fancy playing down the middle because he never offers himself as a target man to receive the ball. Strange player. We seem to have hit a patch of poor form and look somewhat jaded. Is this a season catching up on our older players? Assuming we go up, fresh youthful championship standard legs are needed next season. As for J.H. Rover, not remotely good enough given what is at stake. I count two shots on target from us all night, both from Mulgrew free kicks. I don't mind us not reaching our levels from time to time, but in reality, that's now four games in a row. I'd say we've been mediocre at best. But in the other three, we somehow found a way to get ahead and hold on for dear life, whereas tonight we could still be playing now and the keeper wouldn't have broken a sweat. They need to be massive improvement for the Bristol Rovers game and it means making numerous personal changes, so be it. We've pushed our luck in the last couple of weeks, getting wins in unconvincing fashion. Tonight, we were, we were well short of even that. A draw or a defeat for Shrewsbury, and we go into Saturday in a stronger position than we started the week. But a win for Shrewsbury, and we're back in trouble. As for Parson Blue, credit to Gillingham. We worked hard to deny Rovers any space. Whenever we had the ball, uh, they had 10 men behind it, and we simply couldn't break them down. Two men marked Armstrong and three big centre-backs headed or kicked everything clear. I thought we looked jaded tonight and that a long season was catching up on some of the players who were struggling to deal with the nerves surrounding our position in the league. Last season, Bolton went up with 86 points and yet we've achieved that total with five games left and we still need another nine or ten points to give ourselves a realistic chance of promotion. The last time we got out of the division, it went to the penultimate game before we clinched second place and promotion. And I, spec I suspect it's going to be the same again this time. Arbitro said this, just got up after three hours... Uh, Kip, and I'm still a bit bewildered by the game and Mowbray tactics. The biggest worry for me is that Gillingham were comfortable. We never stretched them or got behind them. Once again, our midfield uh, two were ineffective and absolutely nothing created by them. Out wide, Conway and Armstrong must have been confused as they swapped wings after about five minutes and back again later. Was this an admission from Mowbray that they got it wrong in the first instance? Graham morphed back into the player we all doubted a few months ago. Mowbray said he won't play youngsters who might be overawed by the pressure, but a clearly unfit Dak starts effectively, leaving us with 10 players. The biggest issue for me was a showboating Whittingham onto the right side, to, uh, right side, a position from where he has clearly struggled this season. He offered nothing. Everybody was confused by Mowbray with that one. The clean sheet and decent performance of the defence and keeper was the only positive from a frustrating night. I'm waiting for the fatigue for the fatigue excuses excuse coming out now on the evidence of last night we will be in the playoffs oh how i do not want to be in the playoffs anyway blue boy 3333 said this sounds like the Plymouth away game but this time we managed to nick a point we need to bounce back at bristol rovers now as for big dog steel starting a uh, not 100 fit dak last night instead of pain was a bad call not good for dak and not good for pain's confidence we need a big performance Saturday. Rovers fan 99. One thing I don't really get is Mowbray sensing seeming insistent on having almost a designated super sub. Now Payne, previously Chapman. When Payne starts, especially over the likes of Conway and Antonson, we start games on the front foot. Yeah, and he's another headache for defenders. He likes he links up well with Dak and it allows us to attack more from the start. He hasn't had an impact starting games, Warsaw home and seemingly away we started well and on the front foot. And he was a big part of that, whereas he struggled to impact the last three games on the bench. He failed to get into the game. He's, he's a good player, perhaps often overlooked for more conservative alternatives. Need to start him, Dak, Graham and Armstrong all together as much as we can. We also would like to see Whittingham start next game in his correct position and attempt to try and get more control of the midfield. You might have a point there. I'm not obviously Payne's biggest fan uh, and I've not seen much of Whittingham to get much myself excited. So uh, we'll see. Tom Phil said this, sounds like we went in with the mindset, nick a point, anything else is a bonus. Got the job done, so credit for that, but it's a dangerous strategy, as we've seen before. Would help if we get a big guy to bring up 
up front and put a real shift in later games. Someone who causes defenders problems and opens space up for others in the absence of a goal scorer. Samuel is neither and Mowbray's persistence of keeping him on the pitch somehow is annoying. It doesn't work to be desi to the desired effect so scrap it and try someone else. One of those nights though that could have been worse but the next one is even trickier. You can grind your way to promotion of course uh, but you won't draw your way to it especially when you have teams like Wigan and Shrewsbury who might lose the odd game but go out and try to put teams to the sword every game and usually do. Game on. As for Jim MK2, he's back once again. Easy to criticise Rovers and Mowbray, but credit should be given to Gillingham. Their manager had clearly been watching tapes of us and instructed the side to press us back hard and early. Armstrong was identified as a danger and was a, was double and sometimes triple marked. Every one of their players also put in a shift and they might feel they should have won. Or Armstrong isn't a, win a winger. He can run the wide channel like Samuel, but he's far more effective playing down the middle with a big striker. With Conway's decline, we've lacked a good proper winger all season. On to the next game, but an improvement will be needed to even get a point out of the Bristol game. That's Luna. She's all upset about it too. MG Pensioner said there's two points chucked down the Swanee last night. Only five games left to save our club. Achieved absolutely nothing yet. If Shrewsbury win Thursday, there will only be two points between us and Disaster. Must win all five. If Shrewsbury lose or draw, we are almost home, but still must win all five. Five. Now you've heard what I've had to say about the match, you've heard what the fans have been saying about the match, you've even heard what the gaffers have to say about the match. But all of that, forget about it, forget it, completely put it at the back of your mind. What really matters is what Caster Cat thinks will happen between Bristol Rovers and Blackburn Rovers. <laughs> That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, go on, Luna. You tell them. You tell them. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date. We're all things Blackburn Rovers. So, before, even before kickoff on Saturday against Bristol Rovers, we will go, we will know what kind of dire situation we are in. She knows. She knows. I know. But it could all change depending on the result against, uh, between Shrewsbury and Bradford City. So, uh, let's all hope that Simon Grayson is wearing his Blackburn Rovers jersey underneath his Bradford jersey. And Luna is there, and she's going to be cheering on Bradford just like me. Anyway, till next time, i got to get going. Go to sort the dog out. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.